Hi everyone and welcome to this really quick GCC Geography Revision video. Now today we're going to be looking at how we can manage river flooding. And the first part to this is looking at our hard engineering strategies. So we're going to focus on three different strategies. Let's dive straight into strategy one. So the first one we're going to look at is our river banks. So there is just a normal river channel, okay, a cross section of a river. What we want to do to that river, let me redraw that river channel again. There we go. Try to get it as identical as I possibly can. Close enough. Is we want to increase the size of the river banks, just like that. Now, these river banks, they're going to be a concrete structure. And we've got a lot of these running along the River Thames in London. And obviously, it's as simple as, you know, the idea is, if this particular river had high levels of, there was high levels of pre precipitation, prolonged rainfall, if this river was to rise up, as it would normally, if there's high levels of rainfall, the water level is not actually going to go over the river banks. It's still going to remain in the river channel. So all we've done is just increase the capacity for the water to stay within the river channel. It's as simple as that. So there's your first one. Increase the size of your river banks. Easy. Right, number two. So here we go. Let me draw my river channel again. There it is, river channel. Now, this river channel here is all well and good, but the problem is it's very shallow and it's narrow so n for shallow n for narrow and that's a problem so of course if there's heavy rainfall or another factor which leads to flooding the water in this river channel is going to be quite easily it's going to be able to get out onto the flood plain so what do we do the solution is we want to do the opposite we want to make our river much deeper much wider there it is so and there is our water level now, of course, what you can see here, this water level is the, the exact same amount of water as in this river channel. But because this river channel here is now much deeper, D for deep and W for wide, um, there's less chance that water is now going to come out of the river channel and flood the floodplain. So that's number two. Number three, I'm just going to move the whiteboard up slightly. Hopefully you can see that. There we go. Is diverting the river around urban areas. So let's say that's our river. And let's say right there we have an urban area, a city. Now, of course, what we don't want is we don't want too much water flowing through the city. Because obviously a city's got impermeable land surfaces, that's going to lead to a lack of infiltration, faster surface runoff, and ultimately more chance that this river flowing through the city is going to flood. So what we want to do is we want to reduce the amount of water flowing through the city at any one point. So we build these diversion channels that go around the city centre and meet up with the river at a later point in its course. So therefore, we've got water going around to the north of the city, to the south of the city. So the amount of water actually flowing through the city is minimal. So there you have it. There's your three hard engineering strategies. Increase the size of the river banks, increase the size of the river channel and divert river around urban areas. OK, so now we're going to move on to the second part of this video. And this is going to be looking at soft engineering strategies of which we're going to focus on two. So the first one is planting trees or afforestation. Now there's our river channel. Now you would have learned with your geography teacher that one of the causes of river flooding is deforestation, the removing of trees. So obviously it just makes sense that a more natural method of protecting rivers from flooding is to just do the opposite and that's plant trees. So quite simply, how does this work? So let's imagine we've got some rain here, uh, precipitation, 
and that rainfall hits the ground and it runs off the surface. Can we see that? So it's running off the surface. I'm just going to show that with arrows. Runs off the surface there. But if we had vegetation, these trees, those trees at that point there and there are going to intercept the surface runoff. It stops it. It slows it down. And because it's stopped it, it's intercepted it, it allows the rainfall time to infiltrate under the ground. And once that rainfall has infiltrated under the ground, it works its way back to the river much more slowly. So of course, this river level here is not gonna rise really quickly because water's going back into the river channel at a slower rate. And that's it, it's as simple as that. So more trees leads to more interception leads to more infiltration and slower surface runoff. So the water level does not rise quickly. Right, I'm going to move the board up for the second method. And this is controlled river flooding. So a little bit of imagination is needed here. Right, there's our river. This area around the river is going to be, I'm going to write farm. Obviously, this is agricultural land. Coming down here, we have a, a railway. Coming through here, we have a road, and there's a bridge there. And then, as you can see that still, there's my river there. And here, we have a very small village. But here, this area, We don't mind if it floods. Right, let's talk through this. So we've got our river flowing through a lot of different things here. So up here, we've got the farm. Now, do we want a farm to flood? Of course we don't, because if a farm floods, we've got no crops, there's nothing to eat, it affects the economy, that's bad news. So this area has a high economic value. This railway line, do we want a railway line to flood? No, absolutely not, because this affects trade, transportation, this railway line has a high economic value. Same goes for the road. We don't want to affect transport. This village has people's homes, their businesses. Once again, this village has a high economic value. But this land here, it's got no economic value whatsoever. So what's the point in building hard engineering strategies or planting trees along the riverbanks to prevent this river down here from flooding. There is no point. The best course of action in this particular region here is just to let the river flood because nothing's going to be affected, nothing's going to be destroyed by it. And ultimately, river flooding, it is a natural process. So you're just allowing the river to do what it does naturally, and that's flood. So control river flooding is just looking at the economic value of the land and knowing what to protect. And if the area has no economic value, then by all means, let it flood. So there you go. In summary, your two soft engineering strategies, afforestation, planting trees and controlled river flooding. Right, hopefully that was useful for everyone. Uh, if it was, please do give this video a like, add a positive comment down below, share with someone else, and please do subscribe to this channel for more future revision videos. Thank you for watching.